please give it up for the one and like Graham K. Thank you. I live in New York now, which is fun. You know, I, I uh, you know, I'm originally originally from Canada, and I, I just uh, got my uh, my green card so I can live and work there. I uh, I only bring all that up to let you guys know that I'm an immigrant now. Uh, I'm an immigrant, okay? I'm an immigrant. I'm an immigrant, okay? And um, yeah, okay. And I only say that. I only say that. I only say that to let any visible minorities in the audience know uh, that you know, samezies. Um, <laughs> Same exact issues, I assume. Uh, it is tough for us. It's tough for us out there, let me tell you. Um, let me tell you. <laughs> this guy's like, no, it isn't. <laughs> no way. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. But... Uh, <clears throat> But now that I live abroad, uh, now that I'm a migrant worker, um, I get to call home every day, and calling home is extra fun. Calling home is extra fun, especially if your parents uh, are still together like my parents. Because what that means is you get to talk to your mom on the phone and just listen to your dad breathe in the background. Just... <laughs> just every 10 minutes, he goes, Christ! You're like, there he is. Oh, good. I thought he was gone. Oh, it's nice of him to check in like that. That's nice. That's nice. And then sometimes my mom and I will be talking, we'll be catching up, you know, about life stuff, and then all, all of a sudden he'll just interrupt us and we'll be like, oh, he'll go up. Uh, uh, yeah, hey, uh, are they paying you? Make sure they're paying you down there. It's like, thanks, Dad. Um, without you, I wouldn't know that I need money. I'm pretty sure when he pictures me in New York, I'm just walking down the street with no shirt on, just like... Help me! I'm a dumb, hungry little boy! How do I eat? Yum, 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 yum! Yum, 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 yum! yum. He's like, there's my son. <laughs> Someone should tell him he needs money. I'll do it. I'll do it. He's a good guy, he's a good guy, but he's old school. He's an old school guy, he can't say I love you. He's never said I love you once in my entire life, which is fine, never bothered me growing up. Uh, I mean, it probably explains why I'm here right now a bit. Uh, just a smidge. Um, but never, honestly, never bothered me growing up. I, I, I didn't know dads could say it. I thought it was like a special mom thing to say. I didn't know, <laughs> I didn't know dads could say it until one day I went to an Italian friend's house and everyone was just making out. <laughs> I was like, you've got a really handsy dad, Giuseppe. <laughs> I can't remember his name, um, but I assume it was Giuseppe. Aren't they all? So at the end of the phone call, I like to mess with my dad because feelings make him uncomfortable. And, and I think that's hilarious now. You know, so my mom will be like, well, I love you, honey. I'm like, I love you too, mom. And one more thing. I love you too, dad. I love you so much. And then he goes, ah, ah, well, ah, ah, well, bye-bye now, son. <laughs> he has like a full aneurysm and hangs up the phone. My dad can't tell me, his son, that he loves me because uh, he understands that that would make him gay. <laughs> he gets it. He gets the science behind it, so. I love, I, I, I love that somewhere in my dad's head, there's a part of him that's like, well, I... I don't want Graham to think that I'm trying to fuck him. <laughs> no, no. So I'll just hang up the phone and go stain the deck. <laughs> There's no time to love my son. I have to winterize the porch. <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> he's a good man. I don't think he's homophobic. I just think he's old school. Feelings make him uncomfortable. I think if you really break it down real homophobia is when you think being gay is a choice, right? You'd never hate somebody for the way that they're born. That'd be insane. You know, you don't like them because you think that they chose to be gay. Which is funny to me because if you think being gay is just a choice, that means you think you could have chosen to be gay, only you didn't. <laughs> Which means you're gay. 
life in your head you're only one decision away from shoehorning a bunch of dicks in your mouth yum 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 it's a big decision is all I'm saying we're not switching to almond milk <laughs> that last joke is uh, just for a few of us, but uh, <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> Guys, let's get back on track. Um, I said earlier my parents are still together, and I don't want you to feel bad. Um, I don't want you to feel bad, okay, if uh, you, you come from a broken home. Um, if your home was broken! If you came from half a home. Uh, I don't want you to feel bad, okay? I don't want you to feel bad if you came from half a family. Uh, not a real family. If you come from not a real family. Like a fake one. I don't want you to feel bad, okay? If you come from a fake family. I don't, I'm on your side. Honestly though, you're lucky because parents should not stay together. Parents should not stay together. My parents have been married for 41 years. And it turns out you cannot love someone for 41 years. If you don't believe me, I will bring you to my parents' home. I'm pretty sure my parents are still together just because my dad doesn't want to have to call Verizon. He's like, well, I don't want to spend four hours on the phone with those pricks. I'll just live with this woman until I'm dead. It's this woman who hates my guts. That's... It's very mutual. They both don't love each other, you know. As soon as your kids turn 30, uh, you should be allowed to walk, w w just walk up to your spouse, man or woman, and be like, well, we did it. Bye-bye. See ya. And then just turn around and walk straight into traffic, you know? Time for sleep, mew, mew, mew. Just get mowed down by a bus. Sweet rest, you know? Just end it. Yeah, old people, old couples, they, my parents just wake up in the morning, they start bickering. And then by lunch, it's, it's, it's uh, audibly louder. They're just ta just angry, they're just shouting at, and then they're just, by, the, by, by, by nighttime, they're just shouting at each other's heads. Just, ah! And then they get tired and they fall asleep. That's why old people go to bed early. They're retired and they got all day to lace into each other. <laughs> if you want to be married for 41 years, you want to know my parents' secret, I'll tell it to you right now, no problem. Uh, alcohol. Here's the secret. Every night between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m., that's wine time. Dinner is just a garnish for wine time. I'll go home, I visit, I'll visit my parents and have dinner with them. And after a couple glasses of wine, I'll catch my mom just staring at the side of my dad's head, just like. Just mumbling his name under her breath, like, David. Ooh, David. Only he's half deaf now, so he just stares forward and he's just like. You know, the rotisserie chicken from Costco is excellent. Dads love the rotisserie chicken from Costco. Don't ask your dad about his feelings. He doesn't have any. But if you ask him about the rotisserie chicken from Costco, he will write you a sonnet. Nine dollars, excellent value. Succulent. You can make hot sandwiches the next day. But dad, how are you doing? Like, how, how are you doing emotionally? Hot sandwiches! The next day! I'm like, all right, man, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's doing all right, though. He's okay. Guy, here's the thing. is I'll say this. Relationships are hard. 
And if you're, you're in one, you're in a long-term one, good for you. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. That's what everyone tells me. It's a lot of work. Um, but I, I, got, I got big personal news, uh, actually, on that front, if you don't mind. Uh, I'd like to share with you guys. Um, I recently just moved in with my girlfriend. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, she, more recently, moved out. No, 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 that's how you get your own apartment, fellas. Uh, it's a little life hack. I'm here to tell you about a life hack I learned, how to get your very own apartment you can't afford. Um, it's pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. <laughs> so, uh, what I did until the lease was up, because I couldn't afford it myself, is uh, what I was doing is I was airbnb out the bedroom, and then I was sleeping in the living room in a sleeping bag like a man like a fully functioning man. Airbnb, what an amazing app. Right, isn't it an amazing app, right? It's amazing, right? Because who wouldn't want to go on vacation and stay with a sad guy, you know? Fly all the way from Europe to live with a broken man for a few days. That'd be fun for them. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I'm a germaphobe. I should not have been okay with this arrangement. I don't like germs, you know? Like before my breakup, if you're like, hey, Graham, um, how much would you charge uh, for strangers to come into your home and then have sex on your mattress. How much would you charge for that service? And I'd be like, ooh, that's disgusting. The price of like, I don't know, like a hundred mattresses, gross. And now after my breakup, I was like, $42. $40, 39 please. Um, and so what I would do when I'd wake up in my own bed and I knew I was gonna have a guest that night, this is true, what I would do is I would flip the mattress uh, to the fuck side. <laughs> the dirty little slutty fuck side. And then it was my turn, I flip it back to the cry side. That's my side. So fuck side, cry side, fuck side, cry side, fuck side, cry side system. Very scientific. Science. It's science based. Yeah. I feel the salt from the tears uh, m canceled out the jazz in the middle, made a full block. Salt cancels jazz. It's science. Um, it's fun to call it jazz. Give her a spin. Um, a little bit of whimsy, you know? <laughs> Airbnb, that stands for bed and breakfast. Let me tell you something, I was not running any semblance of a bed and breakfast. A bed and breakfast should have more than just mustard for breakfast. If you don't know what an Airbnb, if you don't know what a real B and B is a real B and B is when you wake up in the morning and then you walk downstairs and some lovely woman in her seventies has made you a full breakfast, you know, and she's like, "How was your rest? Are you rested? Check the old mill on the way out of town. It's historic." You're like, "Thanks, old lady." It is not when you wake up, walk past the living room, look inside and see a man in his 30s in a sleeping bag, <laughs> staring back at you, trying to pretend he didn't just hear you have sex on his mattress. Just... <laughs> if you want some mustard, you gotta eat it over the sink. <laughs> she took the dishes! <laughs> Get out! Relationships are hard. I think also one of the reasons why it didn't work out between us um, is because when I moved in with her, I inherited two cats and I always grew up with dogs. I always preferred dogs over cats, you know? You know, just, just because I like it when your pets love you back. Um, yeah, yeah, that's just me. You know, I don't understand why you want to pay for something to ignore you around your own house. It's like hiring a little furry 14 year old to be a dick to you. Guys, I've told that joke before. Cat people do not like that joke. Ooh, they hate it. Sometimes they'll stand up in my show and be like, hey, fuck you, buddy. How dare you talk about Mitzi that way, you son of a bitch. Who'd want to own a dog anyway? They're so high maintenance. That's what cat people always say about dogs, right? Oh, dogs are so high maintenance. Oh my God, think about it. You gotta, you gotta wake up. Every morning, every morning, you gotta wake up. Could you imagine? 
Then you gotta take the dog outside, let it poop outside your home. Not me, I'm a cat owner. I wanna keep the shit in my home. I wanna store it for days in a sandbox. I'll keep the piss as well. Cause I'm greedy, I want it all. Yum, yum, yum. Keep it in the same home that I breathe in. That's where I'll keep it. Where I breathe. And a couple times a week, you get to feel like an old timey gold miner prospector. Just shaking it up. I got one. I'm alone. I am alone. Never mind. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Is that, you know, the dogs love you back. They get it. Every dog is pumped about this arrangement. Every dog is like food, shelter, snuggles. Thank you. Every dog is like, thank you so much. I tell you what I'm gonna do for you. Is no matter who comes to the front door. Well, I'm gonna fucking yell at him. Yep, and you bet. You tell grandma to leave the casserole on the porch. I know, it's what you've always wanted. Just every time, when, every time someone comes to your door, just turn it into a stressful occurrence. I'll go home, visit my parents. My parents' dog, that guy hasn't seen me in months. He'll come running down the stairs like, oh my God, you're back. I thought you were dead. And he jumps on me, he's a big boy. He tries to kiss my face, you know, it's nice. And he's got, he's also got like a full erection even though he's got no balls. That's love, I think, fighting through zero balls for a full erection, you know? He's really, really fighting through a disability. And I like that, that's perseverance, you know? Don't know how he does it. I have trouble after six beers these days. This guy, zero balls. Fully formed welcome rocket, just for me. That's courage. Courage. Respect. I think respect is the word we're all thinking of, respect. <laughs> cats, they don't love you back. They don't care. I'll give one of my new cats, I'd give one of my new cats a little snuggle. Give him a little snuggaroo, like, hey, buddy, what's up? How are you doing? And he'd give me, the, he'd give me this entitled look back, like he earned it. Because he sunned himself all day. <laughs> give him a little snuggle, like, what's up, buddy? He looked back at me, like, just be like, you know, you're never going to make it in comedy. <laughs> you don't even fuck her, right? I've been watching. <laughs> He used to sit on the dresser and just stare at us. I told my ex, I was like, this is weird. She's like, it's fine. I'm like, I, I, he's looking at me. I look, I look over my shoulder and just see him just staring at me. Just... I wouldn't do it like that. Doggy style, how gauche. Blech, blech, blech. Pick that up when you're done. <laughs> it's hard to keep a rhythm going with all that racket on, you know? It's just I'm trying my best. Trying <laughs> my best. Another problem with these cats, they didn't have cool names. You know, they're a name by my ex before I got on the scene. So they had like girly girl names, you know? Their names were uh, Kitty and Handsome. Kitty and Handsome. And uh, Handsome was a little rascal. And uh, he was a bad guy. Let me tell you something. Handsome is also a weird word to yell when you're alone. <laughs> we live in an apartment building. The neighbors didn't know we have cats. They just heard my ex leave in the morning for work. And then like a little bit later, they just hear me just Handsome! 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 Oh, handsome! You dirty, dirty little boy. You filthy little animal. Mm, you pooped on the carpet again, didn't you? They're just listening through the wall. Like, 
Susan, we gotta move. That narcissist next door is shitting on his own carpet again. I, I think he's reprimanding himself in the mirror. He's not, he's not that handsome. I mean, he's a little, <laughs> he's a little. I think he's balding a bit. That was a hurtful laugh, ma'am. <laughs> I am though, I'm, my hair's still pretty good, not bad, you know? But uh, I, on the sides, it's, I don't know what happened with the hairs here, but they were like, no, no more, we're good. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and I don't know what God or whoever, you know, he or she was thinking when they designed my body. I have no idea what they were thinking when they designed my body. It's like, I want Graham to be okay, good looking uh, until he's uh, uh, 30. And then I want hairs to slowly start falling out the top of his head. And then I would like new hairs to start growing out of his shoulder blades. Yep. I think women are gonna love this switchamaroo. Why the shoulder blades? Well, because he's my angel. <laughs> I went to the, the doctor because I was, I was concerned, you know? I was like, man, I'm single, I, what, what, I'm losing my hair, what's going on? I was like, how am I losing my hair, doctor, and getting hairier at the same time? And that's what he said. He said, Graham, you have an elevated level of testosterone. That, that's why bald guys always have hairier bodies. That's why you have a stronger jawline. That's uh, probably why you have a higher libido. And that's probably also why I'm treating you for chlamydia right now. And I was like, well, I don't want to make two trips. Um, did you guys know that chlamydia is cured with one pill of penicillin and then in 24 hours you are 100% cured? Yeah, uh, I did not know that. Uh, they should tell you that before they tell you you have chlamydia. That should be the order of info that comes at you at the doctor's office. I thought I was gonna have to get, get a, just buy a leather jacket and talk to kids after school about my life. I can't afford a leather jacket. Am I good at sitting backwards on chairs? I don't know what our STD guys are up to. I can see a lot, of, a lot of you ladies in the audience are looking at me right now like, that guy's gross. That guy is gross. Think about this, ladies. Um, I have a certificate from my local clinic saying that I'm 100% chlamydia free. Do any of the gentlemen you're sitting with have said certificate? You are playing with fire. No, quite literally, I know, you're playing with fire. Uh, be careful. It burns. Um, uh, <laughs> getting older, though, getting older. Weird age. Just turned uh, 37, getting up there. 37 is not old, not old, it's not old, you know. Not old. I mean, I beat Jesus. That's pretty good, though, right? Four years better at living than the Son of God. That feels good to be better than the Son of God. Feels good to be better than him at living. That's just math. Yeah. By the way, it's not that hard living at 37, Jesus. It's not that hard. Not that hard. Just, just keep your head down. Don't talk so much. Yep, yep, yep. You're going to get clipped. You know what I mean? Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> 37. Weird age, weird age, 37. I'll tell you why, because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bridge generation. I'm the last, uh, gen I'm the last generation uh, to go through puberty without the internet to help. <laughs> internet, very helpful for puberty. Um, and uh, I'm the last generation where one day, um, just like a light switch, one day, out of the blue, my body told me I wanted to see something that I had never seen before and could not see. Very unfair. <laughs> just one day I was just playing with my He-Man, like, nee, 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 go into the castle. <laughs> and then a, a voice in my head was like, hey, kid, uh, put down that He-Man. <laughs> you like something else now. <laughs> oh, 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 what is it? Pussy. Oh, oh. Well, what does it look like? 
uh, I don't know. <laughs> but it's going to consume you for the next 50 years, so put down that toy and get out there and find some. And I was just like, ah, 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 would you know, okay, ah, would you, okay, ah. That's pretty much where I've been for the past 20 years. Uh, just uh, wandering the streets, hoping for the best. Um, weird age. I'm the last generation to do this, where you know, my buddies and I, we wanted to see uh, what a naked lady looked like so badly that we went to the corner store and tried to steal porno magazines. Yeah, this was the big, this was the big scam. What we do is we get the dirty magazine off the top shelf, and then we put it inside a different clean magazine. And then we try and buy that magazine. Just go to the cash and be like, hello. <laughs> yes, us three 12 year olds. would like to buy this one Harper's Bazaar magazine, please. <laughs> yes, we're paying in three different groups of quarters. So standard transaction. <laughs> They'd always find us and we'd run away. Like, ah! No! You think you're gonna go to pervert jail or something? And then you'd be back the very next day buying candy. It's a very weird age, 11, 12, just 50 50 concern, pussy and candy. <laughs> Equal concern in a young boy's brain, you know? I miss those days. <laughs> I can't get some pussy, I'll just get some Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> I'm lonely. No, I'm not. Yum, yum, yum. Hmm, that solves it. <laughs> Weird age. Getting older, you know? My ex, she always, she always wanted like, uh, she, uh, you know, like we were long distance for a little while. I think that was a big problem. And she, she was always like, you know, I, we, we, we should do, uh, do kinky stuff. You know, you should send me, you should send me a dick pic. And I just, I, I'm not a dick pic guy, you know? I wouldn't do it, it's just weird to me. Um, I think one of the added benefits though, if you were a dick pic guy, uh, one of the added benefits is you get very good at tricky perspective photography. That's good. It's <laughs> a good skill to have, perspective photography. He's trying to trick your girlfriend into thinking your penis is eight stories tall. <laughs> I like how that side of the room has clearly seen more dick pics than this side of the room. This is the married older side. This is the dealing with dating app side over there. <laughs> I think the thing I like most about the idea of sending dick pics is the idea that an image of my penis gets to fly through space. <laughs> That's fun, because I'll never make it. He deserves to go, you know? It's like, Godspeed! Ah! Fare thee well, traveler! I love that they invented the satellite like 60, 70 years ago, and they were like, I can't imagine what we'll achieve in 60, 70 years with a, what we'll achieve with this technology. And flash forward today, we're just firing dicks off them. Just <laughs> hope this makes it to Francine. Bam! <laughs> Did you guys know that NASA, the space agency in the 70s, they beamed uh, Beatles music and math into space? Yeah, in the hopes that like one day an advanced society would see it. That's true. And I just love the idea that the very real possibility that one day aliens are gonna see the Pythagorean theorem and be like, ooh, that's some tight math. I like that, that's good. <laughs> good job down there, guys. And then they're gonna hear Hey Jude and be like, ooh, nice harmonies. I like that, that's nice. And then like five space minutes later, they're just gonna get hit in the face with a million dicks. Just like <laughs> <laughs> What happened to their society? I don't know, but I'll tell you what, that planet is armed. <laughs> I remember when I was a little kid, I'd never seen a naked lady before. So what I did uh, is, I, is the smartest thing I've ever done uh, in my life to this point, is I made my own naked lady pornography. Um, what I did is I uh, bought some tracing paper and if you're under the age of 25, you don't know what tracing paper is. 
Before computers, um, what we would do is we'd have to buy a very thin sheet of paper and we'd place it over the item we wanted a copy of and then we'd trace around it and then we'd have something that looked completely different. <laughs> but in pencil, so it was very helpful. So I bought this tracing paper, ran it to my bedroom, found the largest drawing of Mary Jane, Spider-Man's girlfriend, that I could find, and then I traced around her beautiful body. Yeah. And then I didn't trace in any of her clothes. <laughs> and then I filled in the middle, the private parts, uh, out of sheer rumor and hearsay. <laughs> Whatever I'd cobbled together through my travels. <laughs> I drew nipples all over the goddamn place. Like, is this enough? Are these big enough? Am I gay? Uh... <laughs> And then I drew in a vagina, I remember, way too wide. Too wide. Um, which, you know, that bush did not belong in any era. Uh, so 1890s, they'd be like, that's too much. Uh, and too high, higher than you'd want. Uh, which is not a complaint we hear very often about vaginas. Nice gal liked her lot. Vagina was too high. Uh, it went up to my sternum. Um, we were not compatible. Quite literally, we were not compatible. So... <laughs> So we were, uh, you know, uh, long distance for a while, my ex, and then she, you know, people are always like, it's not that big a deal, it's a lot easier these days. They'd always try and tell me this. It's a lot easier these days because of technology, things like Skype and FaceTime, amazing technology. I was like, yeah, you're, you're right. It is amazing technology, right? Because for free, you can actually see your girlfriend, you know, slowly falling out of love with you. Uh, so it's pretty amazing. <laughs> is, it, is that a little too real uh, for this audience? <laughs> I, I think it's funny. Um, I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> I stand by it. Um, but, you know, I'm doing okay. Guys, doing all right, I'm fine. You know, 37, whatever, you know, I'm getting older, which is fine. All my buddies, I'm the last guy out of my crew of high school buddies uh, who, uh, you know, who, who, who doesn't have any kids yet. They all got married, and they all got married over the same summer, which is rude. Um, <laughs> Very rude, you know. They all got married over the same summer, and uh, they all had destination weddings, which is doubly rude. And if you don't know what a destination wedding is, um, a destination wedding is when your supposed friends go, hey, uh, can you uh, stop work? Can you stop money going into your bank account? Stop it. Um, and can you take money out of your bank account and then fly to someplace? And then after that, uh, can you put yourself up in a hotel? Take more money out, put yourself up in a hotel, and then after that, uh, give me a present. <laughs> give me a present. I'm like, I don't know, I don't know if uh, you know my budget, um, but I talk about my penis in front of strangers in the dark. Uh, so. I don't like a two-day wedding, I'll tell you why. Because the first day is the, 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 uh, the, the ceremony. It's when, you know, the father has to give away, give away his daughter. Give her away, give her away, give her away. <laughs> I'm done, you take her, you know? Which we all know what the subtext of that is, but we don't think about it. That man is made to get up in front of a group of strangers and loved ones and be like, everybody, I gathered you here just to let you know. That guy down there, well, he could fuck my daughter now. I guess, I don't know. He's just my baby girl, taught her to ride a bicycle, but uh, I'll just hand her off to you. I've even tarted her up here, so. <laughs> Hope it turns you on. And it's the only night where everyone knows they have sex. They consummate the marriage. And then the next morning, the three of them just have breakfast together. <laughs> A dad should never have to know within the hour when a penis was around his daughter's face. And then be made to buy that man breakfast. Next time, next time you go to a two-day wedding, look at the dad's face the next morning. Just, <laughs> I paid for this. <laughs> hey, I hope you're hungry from fucking my daughter all night, you son of a bitch. <laughs> hey, 
have some eggs. <laughs> Weird. That's super creepy to me. They always walk into some like meal, hall, like dining hall, like last, like late, and then everyone goes, ooh. I'm like, ugh. It's your family. Grandma's always like, she looks flushed. <laughs> Gerald used to make me look flushed. <laughs> but now he's dead. He's dead. <laughs> Sit down, Grandma. All right. All right. <laughs> a little tired, a little tired, guys. I, uh... I recently, uh, I, I flew in, I flew in on the red eye, red eye flight, six hour red eye flight. And uh, I had never done it before. Somebody suggested it to me. They're like, take the red eye. I'm like, why? It's like, it's great. You get to fly at night. Boom, you wake up, you got an extra day. Boom, wake up, you just have a, you just sleep on the plane. You know, you just have a beautiful restorative rest. Just a lovely sleep in a tube of farts flying through the sky, and that's where you want, that's where you want to sleep, you know? And guys, I, I was like, I jumped on it, you know, because I'm, I'm 6'4", and I love to fly. Uh, you know, the chairs are made for me, it's good. I got on the plane, and I was like, uh, hello, I'm here to lie down. I'm tired, uh, it's bedtime, I'd like to lie down, it's midnight, I've been, I've been awake all day, and uh, here to lie down. And they're like, nope, that's, this is where you sit up. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna sit up for six hours in a chair that goes back this much. <laughs> just enough to justify the button, just. Is this? And that's when you bust out your neck pillow. You're like, the trusty neck pillow will save me. That's when you realize neck pillows do not work if you have a neck. You very quickly realize you have just purchased a beanbag scarf. Like, I don't understand why this neck pillow doesn't work. I just bought it an hour ago from a magazine store. It should work. <laughs> so you don't sleep. You just stare forward. Six hours. Just, ah! Ah! You're like, well, maybe I'm hot. Maybe that's the problem. I'm too hot. You, you try that little fan thing, the little twisty tss, 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 You reach up, the little tss, 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 The thing that just shoots a, a beam of air. It just makes one of your eyes dry. You're like, ah! Ah! You know that thing that sucks up the first class coughs and then brings it back and shoots it in your face? Just, <clears throat> ah! they're having the fish up there. <laughs> Smells fresh. Good for you. <laughs> so you don't sleep. Maybe you're shorter and you're lucky and you do sleep. But even then, it's not a real sleep. It's one of those like weird plain half sleeps. Yeah. You know, where your eyes are closed. But you're just like... <sighs> <laughs> Am I asleep? I feel like I've been listening to that drink cart come towards me for three hours. Should I get a tomato juice? I only drink tomato juice on planes for some reason. I bet you 90% of the world's tomato juice is consumed on planes. And then you wake up and you have the flu. 
They're like, oh, good. I got a full extra day to find a hospital. A full day. Bonus day. <laughs> Uh, weird age. I, I start I start a lot of things too late. I started driving too like driving too late. I I lived downtown. I lived in Toronto. I lived in New York, and I never really got to start driving. I started I learned how to drive at 32, and that is too old to learn how to drive. <laughs> too old to learn how to drive. Um, every day people would say very rude things to me. You know, no one would ever wish in my regular life uh, that that I for me to kill myself. And then as soon as you drive, everyone's like, kill yourself. You're like, oh. And I didn't have any good comebacks because I'm not, I wasn't a new driver. Like, or because I was a new driver, I didn't have any good comebacks. Like you guys are all drivers, you're all fully functioning adults. And if you're a driver, you have like a comeback ready to go. Just in the, loaded in the chamber at all times, your go-to just in case. Like people are like, kill yourself. And you're like, oh yeah, well, da 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 da. And then they're like, oh, you know, you got me or whatever. So all I had was like, what I, what I remember my mom saying when I was a little boy driving with her, so I just had like a baby boomer lady comebacks. <laughs> I'd be driving around Brooklyn, people were like, kill yourself, man. I'd be like, oh yeah, well, 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 back off, you turkey. <laughs> Keep it moving, buster. <laughs> she used to call people turkeys. <laughs> Sometimes I'd be in an intersection and then a whole group of cars uh, would shout at me and honk at me like a group activity, like they planned it before, you know? And just honking and yelling, being really rude. And I'm just like, ah, I, I, I feel honesty is the best a, in that scenario. Just be honest. Uh, so what I would do is I'd roll down my window and I'm, I'd just be like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> and I'm so scared. <laughs> And I want you all to like me so much. And they'd all slowly back away, like that honest man's gonna kill us. He's too honest. <laughs> Fun job. Fun job. Get to travel, you know. Went to a uh, went to a nude beach. Went to a nude beach in Canada. Yep, let me tell you something. Um, Canada should not have nude beaches. <laughs> I was like, I'll, I'll go to a nude beach. I'm not a judgy guy. I'm not a judgy guy. You know, turns out I am. I'm a very judgy guy. I also learned you cannot have a nude beach if it's always cold. First guy I saw at a nude beach in Canada in July was wearing a sweater and no pants. I was like, what are, what are you doing here, sir? You just look like a forgetful guy. You're cold, I can clearly see that you're cold. <laughs> you know, and if you've never been to a nude beach, I'll save you the time. I'll save you the time, it's just a bunch of old balls. As far as the eye can see, old balls. It's not even a gay nude beach. That's just who goes to nude beaches is old dudes. Something happens to the male psyche around 50, 60. Something happens to us. I don't know what, but some, at some point we're just like, someone look at it, please, one last time. It's still good, I swear, please. One last gander. <laughs> It's like a nine-year-old dog at the pound. It's like, I'm still good for a couple pets. Some gray around the snout, but it's fine. <laughs> this is true. The only young and in-shape people I saw at this nude beach were these two Asian guys with huge dicks. Yeah, and I think they're only there to fight racism. Because there's two of them, so you know it's not an anomaly. Because those people are good at math. Fighting stereotypes. Fighting stereotypes. <laughs> like a modern day Rosa Parks. A Chan Ho Parks, if you will. <laughs> a couple 
baseball fans over here. <laughs> but yeah, it's fine. Fine. You know, it's, uh, it's a fun job. This is a fun job. It's a fun job because, uh, you know, I get to, you know, travel, hang out with cool people like you. And I had a lot of crummy jobs, like a lot of bad jobs before this. And I used to get fired from every single one of them. Um, it's true. <laughs> And one job I, got, I had before this that I got fired from is I used to be a house painter. I used to paint the outside of people's homes. And how I got fired from that job is, long story short, I painted the wrong house. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. I guess we got the address wrong. And whoever lived in that house uh, left for work early in the morning, you know, stupidly assuming um, no one's gonna paint their home. And then we, we just pulled in the driveway probably one second later and committed a crime for eight hours in the sun. And then our boss finally found us like way too late. He's like, you idiots painted the wrong house. And then we packed everything up and drove away. Criminal masterminds. That's uh, how you solve that problem. It turns out you just drive away. And then we were fired immediately afterwards, of course, we're morons. Um, so one of the biggest mysteries of my life is what happened to that family when they got home. And their house was a fucking different color. And nobody had any answers. They left their home in the morning and it was a white home. And they got back and it was a brown home. <laughs> and if you're wondering what shade of brown, I like to describe it as a noticeable brown. <laughs> the kind of brown you're gonna notice. <laughs> I'm sure I caused a divorce. <laughs> Think about it. How do you ask your spouse if your house was always brown? There's no way to even start that conversation. <laughs> you just have to take a bus to the next town over and start fresh. I know what happened back there. <laughs> Something went sour. I'm gonna need a fresh start here. <laughs> Buses are the worst way to travel. Every, if you go, if you go to greyhound.com, it is the only travel website that defaults to one-way travel. They assume you don't wanna see your family again. It's 100% true. Think about any other time you've bought a ticket online. They, it just defaults to, to, they assume you want to come back. They go, you love your kids, come back, round trip. Round trip, you love your kids, come back, round trip. Greyhound's like, you want to start fresh, don't you? <laughs> yeah, you killed Jimmy, didn't you? You stabbed him. You took a stash, didn't you? I'm like, I did stab him, I did take a stash. <laughs> Yeah, we're doing all right. <laughs> doing better in my career, which is good. You know, I don't have to shop at the dollar store for everything. I used to buy everything at the dollar store. You know, we all have to shop there, I get it. But you shouldn't buy everything there. I used to buy everything there, you know. They sell a bunch of weird stuff they have no business selling. They sell tools. <laughs> Who's like, well, I want to put an addition on my home and... Uh, I have seven dollars. <laughs> I want to build a spare bedroom for my mother-in-law and uh, I'd like the walls to collapse on her face, so. <laughs> sell a bunch of weird stuff there. They sell condoms. One dollar, pack of condoms. <laughs> Who's like, 
this is where I'm going to save money. <laughs> this is where I'm going to cut corners in the old budge. <laughs> I don't want to get pregnant. No, I do not want to get pregnant. Nope, nope. But I do like to gamble. So, <laughs> one-stop shopping for old Francine. Let's uh, roll the dice. Condoms still say lubricated. I think we get it at this point. Every condom package, I'm newly single, so I, I see, I'm noticing these things. Every condom package is like Trojan, lubricated in big letters. Like, like I think we get it at this point. Do you mean that's like a no smoking sign on an airplane? Like, it's been 40 years. <laughs> Who's sitting down in like 26F and is just like. <sighs> <sighs> what? <laughs> Since when? Ashing on a baby beside them, just. <laughs> Still says lubricated on the package. Like, who's. Who needs this information? Who is going to the drugstore and is like, whoa! Everyone crowd around! Lubricated! Wow, that's great. I've been using that chalky one this whole time. Oh, I love the chalk. Really soaks up the foreplay, nice and dry. Just the way she likes it. Hot sex, start a fire in the woods hot. Uh, no matches. All the guys laugh at that one and all the women go, ow. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sell a bunch of weird stuff they have no business selling. Pregnancy test. Dollar store, pregnancy test. Let me help you out. If you are going to the dollar store to purchase a pregnancy test, you're pregnant. You're already pregnant. I just saved you a dollar. And uh, sounds like you're gonna need it. You are going to need it for your child's bail fund. So, gotta get that started early. Get a head start. <laughs> but, uh, yep, doing all right, doing all right. I, I, I uh, bought my first ever tailored suit. Could never afford a, a tailored suit before. I used to only be able to afford uh, suits from a store called H&M. And if uh, you don't know what that is, that's the kind of uh, clothing where a gust of wind catches a loose thread. <laughs> And, uh, and you look down and it's gone. Um, and then I'm arrested again. Um, so uh, I bought a tailored suit and uh, I did not know this, uh, be forewarned gentlemen, um, but when the tailor measures for the pants, he will ask you, which way do you lie? Which way do you lie? Now, I did not know what he was asking me. But apparently, he was asking me which way my dick goes. <laughs> to the right or to the left. Now, e even if I did know what he was asking me, I don't know the answer by heart. Is that something I'm supposed to be keeping tabs on, guys? Every morning before I leave the house, I'm like, left. <laughs> Hard left today. No, I'm ready for all questions. <laughs> Safety first. And if you're wondering why, why is he asking that? I'll tell you why. It's so he can uh, leave some extra room on that side, which is assuming a lot. Um, <laughs> never been an issue. Uh, so always fit in there snug as a bug in a rug. I just uh, always been a good amount of room, you know. Everyone stop staring at my crotch, please. It's 2019, this is my workplace, okay? They're harassing me in my workplace. <laughs> in my own defense, who are these guys that that's a problem for? Who are these guys that are going pants shopping and they're like, uh, I hope my fucking cock can fit in here. 
Yep. I'm tired of blowing out the front left, you see. Keep having to patch it up. That's why I can't wear Levi's anymore. I'm tired of having to cram my massive hog in my pants every morning. Ah! Honey, I'll be a minute. Ah! We're always missing our dinner reservations. <laughs> That's how I imagine you would talk. Uh, if your dick was too big for pants. You'd be a very self-assured individual, a very cocksure, one might say. I believe that's the word. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Um... So anyway, this guy's like, which way do you lie? Which way do you lie, sir? I don't know what he's asking me. I thought he's asking something else, more personal, about me. He's like, which way do you lie? Which way do you lie? And I was like, uh, uh, oh, I'm straight. He was like, straight? <laughs> straight, son, is that? I was like, you bet, straight as an arrow, pal. <laughs> right down the old pipe, no big deal. <laughs> he was like, that's weird. I'm like, I don't think it is. It's like nine out of 10 at least, you know? And then he got the pants back. <laughs> Big empty floppy windsock in the middle. And I was like, what the hell is this? Am I gonna put loose change in there to hold it down on windy days? My crotch sounds like sleigh bells way out of season. That's a Christmas tradition in my family. You guys having fun? Good. Make sure I got all these things here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, uh, you know, just jealous. I'm jealous. Jealous of a lot of things. Every time I'm single, I'm jealous of my, my gay friends also. It just seems like a lot easier to be a gay dude out there, you know, when you're single, right? It's less of, less of a cat and mouse game, less of a chase. Guys are a little more direct, hornier, you know, less of a cat and mouse, right? Less of a cat and mouse. It's more like two cats <laughs> sucking each other's dicks. <laughs> two beautiful self-grooming animals <laughs> running at full speed towards each other's cat dicks. <laughs> they are, you know, they're, they're more, more forward and stuff, you know, and, um, and I, uh, yeah, I, I can prove it. You see, here's the thing, is uh, once I used to work in a, a, a restaurant in a gay neighborhood, and I think that, I honestly think that every straight guy should be a waiter in a gay neighborhood, just for once, just to, to know what it's like, just for one second, uh, to be a woman. Um, guys are very aggressive turns out, and uh, I was just standing on, 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 on the patio, just, you know, you know waiting uh, for people to come, and then, uh, no, never mind. Uh, that was a Freudian slip. But uh, I was just, I was standing on, you know, just, you know, I had a, my section was outside, and I was just sitting on a street corner in, in Chelsea, and, uh, and, and this guy walks down the street, and he looks at me, and I'm, I'm Canadian, so I smile I'm like, back. I'm like, hello, you know? And then that, that was the wrong thing to do. Um, and then he just started walking across the street with a look in his eye. <laughs> it's like, you're gonna get it out of here. And I was just like, oh, oh, oh. I do declare. <laughs> Good Lord. It's too many gentlemen callers. <laughs> <laughs> and twice in one year this happened to me twice in one year um, guys came up to me 
across the street and offered me $100 to go down on me. $100 to suck my dick. And then $100. And, yeah. Way horny. No women has ever come up to me and offered for free. <laughs> That's also how I know being gay is not a choice because I would have just chosen to be gay, got my dick sucked, taken the hundred bucks, and then unchosen to be gay. I would have been like, I'm back, baby! Woo! Time to go to the strippers to see those boobies I like so much. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think getting up there, getting older, time to probably settle down soon, you know? I'm the last guy out of my crew of friends uh, growing up who doesn't have any kids. They all got kids when I go back home and they're all like, uh, oh, you know, come see the kids. And uh, it's just exhausting. They're exhausting. <laughs> Everything's exhausting. And I would like, I'd like kids, but I think I, I'm just too tired. <laughs> I'm just too tired already. I'm exhausted right now. And I have not had a long day. Um, I, I had breakfast and then came here. Just exhausted. <laughs> I, I'd like to have kids, but I think I could only have kids if I knew in advance my wife and I were going to get a divorce. Yeah, because I could do weekends. <laughs> no? You guys all have kids. Okay, well, let me tell you. <laughs> My buddy, he's got three kids. He's got a, a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and one that's like, I don't know, like a zero. Uh, you know, the kind they hold it, they, they go, hold this, and you're like, ah! I can feel its guts! And then you throw it, like, I don't know. I don't like that I can hold a soul. It grosses me out. <laughs> well, guys, you, you guys have been a great audience. I'm gonna end on uh, something funny. Um, <laughs> I, uh, it, it's fun, I get, you know, it's great. I, I, my favorite part about this job is I get to sleep in every single morning. Every single morning I get to sleep in, um, except uh, the birds outside my bedroom window, they, they, need, they need to shut the fuck up. Um, yeah, and stop trying to get laid every single morning at uh, 5 a.m. That's uh, peak cat calling hour for birds, turns out. And uh, every morning at around uh, 5, 5.30 a.m., a man bird will land beside a ladybird and uh, I assume it's a ladybird. I, I don't know what kind of bird neighborhood I live in. Um, and he'll look at her uh, five in the morning, look at her and be like, hey, 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 hey! Can I fuck you? 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 I don't know. 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 Maybe, maybe. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe. Please, please. 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 At a certain point, I just open up the window, lean out, and I'm like, will somebody fuck that bird? <laughs> or leave her alone, it's 2019. <laughs> Back off, buster. <laughs> you guys have been great, thanks very much. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.